Uh, let's uh, start. So yesterday, we talked about uh, the basic uh, uh, composition of uh, you know, the basic ingredients in, in estimating a, a, a cross section. And uh, that is basically uh, pattern luminosity times uh, some uh, center of mass, uh, uh, pattern center of mass uh, cross section. And we said that the, the pattern luminosity is uh, typically a pretty steep function of, uh, of tau. And tau is basically, uh, basically the parameter that tells you that uh, what fraction of uh, center of mass energy is being used in that particular parton uh, center of mass collision. Okay. And uh, now, of course, this also depends on phase space. So there are other things we talk about there. There's something about phase space. Right. So basic lesson is that uh, you, you basically, you have a very roughly speaking, you add a particle, you have, you add one of these, you know, of course there is also, and, uh, and then there, I think uh, in real, you know, in actual calculation, there's also a coupling, right? some gauge coupling or Yukawa coupling and so on. Okay, so it also depends on that. You know, in in, uh, in standard model, you know, there is a there is a alpha s or, or g s square if you want, uh, and also alpha weak. These are probably more important couplings for for most of the background. Um, then uh, um, something that uh, well we, we don't we, we we are not going to talk too much about, but there are there are there are singularities. Sometimes, okay. So for QCD, for example, for many radiations, there are collinear soft singularities, and uh, you know there are there are other things that could, in principle, matter. Um, okay. Now, let's uh, let's do uh, do some. Uh, well, just with this, let, let's try to see. You know. First, let's start with standard model rate. Okay, the, model, the rate of the particles that we know are there, the production rate. So let me write it here because it's probably useful later. So for 14 TeV, okay. Um, so well, there are there are many standard model processes. Let's let's talk about some of the, the you know, it's a PP bar, PP to something. Right, the, that, that thing can be, for example, I can produce W. Well, let me, let me, let me actually start out with the largest, uh, so, such as QCD digest. Okay, for example, QCD digest. Um, you know, of course, I have to say what do I mean by digest. Okay, so the, in this case, for example, we can say if the jet PT is greater than 250, just an arbitrary number just to give us some, uh, and this is about a 100 nanobar. Okay. And, uh, and W goes to L nu, okay, this means that I QQ bar produce a W decay to uh, lepton and neutrino. Okay, so that's a particular useful, uh, well, very useful channel, and uh, also important background to many things. Um, so twenty nanobar, and uh, Z goes to charge leptons is about uh, two nanobar. Okay, it's a, this is just rough numbers. Okay, don't not precise. Okay, uh, yeah, you know you, you can look it up. Actually, the real number you can look it up. Okay, I'm just trying to round up as far as much as I could. And the TT bar, this is also interesting. You know, very important background. It's about a 900 pico bar. Now we're switching units. Okay, Higgs 
production is about uh, you know, 20 to 30 picobar. Okay? Let's, let's call it 30 picobar. Actually, actually, I don't remember the precise number. Okay? And, uh, um, and WW, the production of uh, WW is about 100 picobar. All right. So, all right. Let, let, let's see. You know. Uh, okay. The, these are the, the some numbers. Let me let me raise it up very high so I, later on I will probably try to refer to it. Okay. I'm not going to touch this board later. Let me, let me put it outside out of my reach. Okay. Okay. Um, so. First of all, um, well, oh, let, let, let's try to do, do, do some understanding already. Okay. First of all, we can look at uh, for example, okay. Let's look at uh, DiJet versus TT bar. Okay, let's compare those two rates. Okay. You notice that uh, they are two order magnitude different. Okay, there are two order magnitude difference between them. Okay. And uh, so, where where this two order magnitude coming from? Okay. So. Um, so the the TT bar is a pro for so let's see. So usually you, you consider several things, right? The first thing is a, is a PDF. Okay, w whether there is some difference in PDF or not. Okay, uh, the content of PDF from DiJet and the TT bar are actually uh, somewhat similar. They are not very different. Okay, they are all dominated by by glue glue initial state. Okay, you can have quark quark too. So so yeah. So this one has a quark quark, for example, as well. Okay, and uh, and this one has a QQ bar. Okay, so why why, why don't we just uh, okay? Maybe I should just draw a few diagrams. So so for DiJet, assume you you have done something like this before. Okay, so I'm not going to draw all the diagrams. So for DiJet, you have this right. So you have a you can have this. You can have a this. You know, and uh, you can have this. Okay, this is just the quark quark, all QQ bar. But the quark quark has a bigger proton density than than QQ bar. So usually, so so, but they they have both, and uh, yeah, you you have many things. You can you can keep going basically. Okay, there's like a, I think on, on the order of 20, 30 diagrams I can draw for DiJet. Okay, um, for TT bar, um, for TT bar is a little less. Okay, for TT bar, let's do it here. Um, so it's basically this uh, this three type for TT bar. Oh, because this final state has to be TT bar. Okay, so this has to start from QQ bar. Uh, QQ bar is smaller than glue glue usually. So, so both basically, you are typically dominated by, by these two. And uh, yeah. So as far as PDF is concerned, I I I think you know they are not that too different. Maybe maybe this is a little bit bigger. Maybe this is a little bit bigger. And uh, well. But it's also, you know, because this is the, for TT bar is the, the energy is around the on threshold is about 350 GeV, okay, on threshold. And the, this DiJet, I have two jet, each with 250 GeV uh, uh, PT. 
So this one will be greater than 500, OK? So then you can look up uh, what, what is the gluon, glue, glue parton density uh, difference between a, a central mass energy at the 350 and, uh, and, and this. And uh, they are, again, they are, they are not too different. This, is a, this, is a, this energy is not very high, so they are not too different. This is, a, this is slightly smaller than this one, OK? A factor of a few, maybe. But um, yeah, and uh, and the coupling is uh, this is R for S. This is a square, and this is also R for S square, basically. Okay, but both of them are, are similar, and uh, yeah, it's also but both of them are two to two. So there's no no additional phase space. So what's the difference of 100 mostly coming from? Okay, the, mo the, 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 the yeah, this is a, this is an interesting case, which is a, you know, it's not too easy, but uh, you can see that it's actually coming from matrix element, and this guy has m many more diagrams than the other guy. Okay, that that's where the factor of 100 is mostly coming from. Okay, so so this is a more than that because this one has many more diagrams. Okay, so so a factor of twenty thirty of twenty to thirty, just from the the number of diagrams. Okay, I mean this is obviously a leading order diagram, right? If you become sophisticated, you draw loops and adding more radiations on top of it. But you can do it to that too. You can do it on both sides. On the other hand, I think uh, this place, the, 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 you, you can see or really see that the, the, the correction to this will be s somewhat larger because, uh, you know, there are, there are more gluons in the, in, the, in the picture, right? So you have more color factors. Also, the, yeah, just, just the, the, the sheer factor, the, the color factor here is, is more, more than that one, okay? There you all, always have to have a TT bar, okay? And, but uh, here, at least this one is pretty, the, this one there's no, you know, if you have a, you know, also like this, this has you know just pure glue diagrams, has much bigger color factor than a, than a, than the diagram would involve quarks. So so as a combination of all these factors give you a factor of 100. I'll say it's, this one is actually not a, not a so straightforward to to see, but uh, you know, it's it's reasonable. When, once you start to draw diagrams, you you see that there there's a, there's a, it's very different. Okay. Um, Okay, maybe we can do something that's slightly more, slightly more, uh, okay. Okay, let's compare TT bar with WW. Okay, let's compare the, these two cross section, okay, TT bar is a, again a close to a nanobar, and uh, WW is a is a close to a um, right. WW is a close to a hundred picobar. Okay, so now the question is, uh, you know, can can we try to understand? Can we try to understand? Again, TT bar, I would say it's mostly coming from glue glue, so I'd like to say PDF. And uh, WW is mostly coming from QQ bar. Okay? And uh, sorry, let me just make sure I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So, and, uh, and the coupling, coupling, so, 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 so QQ bar W, I think uh, you, you probably all know how to draw this diagram, okay, W, W, and uh, it's uh, Z gamma star W, W plus, uh, okay, there are these diagrams, and the, the, the uh, couplings here is alpha S square, here is alpha w square, okay? And uh, 
On the other hand, they, 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 they all wanted to produce right on threshold, so the threshold is slightly different. Okay, threshold is slightly different. And this is 350, and this is at 160, around that. Okay? So, uh, parton luminosity for gluon, gluon at uh, 350. So you can, you can, you can, if you look at the figure, that uh, you can, you can, it's about the same as the QQ bar at 160. Okay, even though the QQ bar is uh, smaller than that, but they are at a slightly different uh, energy. So they are, it's, it's about the same, okay? On the other hand, alpha S square is uh, about 10 times alpha W square, okay? So this is the, 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 the factor of 10 coming from, from the, yeah. Um, Again, this is not a precise science. I'm not trying to teach you. you know, this is not the actual calculation, okay? There, there needs to be, you know, next leading order corrections and so on, okay? With a factor of twos and so on, okay? But th th this is, a, you know, this is just trying to tell you, like, a, this is a way to, to, you can estimate some of these rates. Okay? So maybe I'll do one more. Let's do uh, W versus H, W production versus Higgs production. Okay, this is all one body process, right? Just on resonance, so there's a, I, I picked the things that there's actually no, no difference in phase space, okay? There's a, yeah. Um, so for PDF, okay? So this is supported by QQ bar, okay? As we draw over there. What is it, what, how does Higgs gas produce? Glue, glue, mostly glue, glue, okay? So, so the Higgs is supported by, by glue, glue. Ouch. So Higgs production is uh, something like this, this top card, okay? And, uh, right. So supported by glue glue. And uh, so this is glue glue. Okay. And the coupling. This is R for weak square. Okay. Higgs is R for S square. Okay. Or GS square if you want. I mean, I'm just, I, I just care about the relative amplitude, that's why. It doesn't matter whether I use alpha or G. So, so this, there's a two strong coupling here, right? This is a white top, but the, the white top is one. Okay, I'm ignoring it. So this is a uh, alpha S square, but there's also a loop factor, okay? What's the size of loop factor? One over 16 pi square. <laughs> so we, we do loop calculations, N square, okay? Um, and the uh, threshold, uh, and uh, this is about 80, this is about 125, okay? So this is a slightly more subtle, okay? It depends on, yeah, anyway, so then you can look up the parton luminosity Okay, if you have a figure that uh, you can, you can try to look at it, and uh, you know this is a. I'm, I'm just showing you. So QQ bar at 80 GeV is about. Uh, it's a slightly less than glue glue, at 125. Okay, it's not a factor of 10. Naively, you have a factor of 10, but the, the, the energy is somewhat different. So it's not really factor of 10. Somewhat a slight, smaller than factor of 10. I'll call it a factor of five. Okay. So, and uh, alpha weak square, and alpha, and the, this one, it's about uh, three times ten to the minus four uh, alpha s um, one over sixteen pi square square. Okay, so there is that factor between these two couplings, and uh, so combine these two. 
combine these two, you, you say that this, yeah, it's about uh, between 10 to the 3 or to 10 to the 4. Okay. I, so, so that works out pretty well. Okay, it's, it's actually four order magnitude difference, okay, the, the actual number. Okay, any questions? No, this is, I, I'm not doing it here. Can you say a word? I, I, I'll do it later. I'll, I'll do it later, okay. So, so for, for, one, for, for one more thing, you, you do pay a one, 1 over 16 pi square in phase space, basically. Two body versus three body, okay. But what about the... the then, then you put, put, uh, put an additional factor of couplings on top of it, too. Yeah, so that, 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 that's also there. That's even, that's even more subtle. So, so I think uh, I, the, the, a naive rule is that uh, it, again, depends on the, the kinematical cuts and so on. I, I will put the either anywhere between 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 3 for adding another particle. Naive. Okay, that's what I will do. Yeah. It's 1 over 36 or something, yeah. It's g2 square over 4 pi. OK? It's, a, it's about one third. Yeah. So, well, so sorry. It's a, yeah. So QCD coupling is 0.1. Alpha S is 0.1. Alpha weak is 0.03, roughly speaking. Yeah. Um, Okay, so this is what we so 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 this is basically you know you, you you can you can you can you can go through the whole table of a standard model cross sections. You see to what extent this can you can understand that. Okay, but just based on estimates like this. Okay, uh, you may not be able to understand everything. At the end, it's, it's actually uh, you know, but you know I think a one order magnitude off is a, is a, is normal. Okay, sometimes you you get a one order magnitude off. But again, you, you shouldn't be three or four order magnitude off. So this kind of estimate is, is a good to tool within an order magnitude. Okay. And this is very useful to keep in mind. So it's just, uh, uh, you know, anytime you, you, you're wondering whether you can see some, uh, some signal or not, the first thing you do is, uh, I will do, is to try to estimate some background just based on this very naive argument. Now, if you already five order magnitude off, forget about it. Okay, don't don't do don't even bother to do the simulation. Okay, you're wasting your time. And, but if you're within the order of magnitude, then then you maybe you may you may want to try a little bit and to try some smart cuts and so on here and there. And you know that, that will you know the, these things usually ha help at a factor of ten level, not not the not a factor of a three or four order magnitude level. Okay, anything you any any smart things you do. Okay, so I guess uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, so just being produced doesn't mean that you, you can see them. Okay, just produce this particle. What you see is not a W particle. What you see is not a Higgs. What you see is not a top quark. What you see is their decay product. Okay, so, and, uh, and uh, what you see, but even their decay product don't come off with a flag, say oh, I'm a B quark or something. You, know, you have to, you know, there, there, are, there, are, there are some, there's a detector that uh, build to, to, to detect those particles. So let, let's talk about a little bit about the detector, okay? So again, I'm not, a, I'm not going to do it like experimentalist, but i just do some schematic uh, description of a, of a detector. Okay, so first let's, let's talk about the, the, the typical objects that we can think about as final states uh, of, of your signal. One, the, the, the first one is a, is a colored particle. Okay, if your final state happens to have a quark and gluons, and this will give you something called a jet. Okay, so we probably don't have any time to get into that. It's a huge subject to understand jet. Okay, so, but you, know, you can ask me if you're interested. 
roughly speaking, is just a, a, a bunch of uh, hydronic energy going to a fairly going to some specific direction. Okay, that's that's called a jet. And uh, then leptons. Okay, leptons in uh, in a serious language means. Uh, Means neutrinos and uh, electron muon and tau. Okay, these are called the leptons. But uh, in uh, in collider physics or experimental uh, circles, leptons means uh, electron and the muon. Okay, when you say ch lepton, you mean these. Okay, because uh, uh, you know these are the clearly identifiable leptonic state in the detector. Okay, and the tau is more subtle. Okay, and uh, and the neutrinos are missing, you know. Okay, well, let, let, I'll, I'll talk about that. So, then there are photon. Okay, we can see photon. Um, and a heavy flavor. Okay, we can we can distinguish a B quark, and to some less extent a charm quark. Okay, and then there is a then there is a neutrino, okay. But uh, in general, this is called a missing energy, okay. Missing transverse energy, sometimes called that, okay. Why is that? You so because uh, so let's say this is a, this is a cross section of a detector, okay. So th this is the beam direction, and detector is a cylinder around the beam, and you measure the momentum going out, and uh, if you just Produce a neutrino, you see nothing. Okay, the neutrino, you know, this this is not big enough to to catch a neutrino, and uh, but uh, but you do see something if you also produce something else that's visible. Okay, suppose you also produce, uh, you know, this is something visible, and this is something visible. Okay, uh, but a neutrino is something going that direction. You don't see that. And but you know you, you see there are there are momentum flow going that way but not that way but just by momentum conservation you derive there has to be something going that way okay so you call that the missing energy you actually don't know whether it's a, a neutrino or not but you know it could be dark matter you know, other things um, okay so since we're on the top topic of uh, detectors let me also just. Uh, uh, you know, draw a picture of a detector. Well, well, let's draw a more abstract picture of a detector. So the detector has layers, okay, many layers around it. And uh, let's say this is the inner part, so I, I'm just, and uh, this is the outer part. Okay, I'm just drawing it like this. Okay, imagine this is just a section. This is like a section of this detector like that. I'm drawing it here. Okay, and uh, it's it's not to scale. Okay, I try to indicate a little bit of a scale, but it's not to scale. Okay, the most inner layer is called the tracking. That's the most inner. In a layer, and uh, and the, this this second part is called the ECAL uh, electric magnetic calorimeter, and uh, this is called HCAL. Okay, and uh, this is called the muon chamber. Oh, just muon detector. Okay. Um, what the tracking did, what the what the tracking do is uh, that uh, so 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 tracking is good for C charge tracks. Okay, actually, I, I'm 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 not going to get into any of the design of actually. You know, there are many designs that you can imagine that a tracking can can do, but uh, generally, its function is to see charge tracks going through it. Okay. And uh, ECAL is measure is measure E and M energy. Okay, so anything that uh, 
that can generate electromagnetic energy. That uh, it will it will leave a deposit in the ECAL. Okay, deposit their energy in the ECAL. Um, um, HCAL is the hydronic calorimeter, so it measures hydronic energy. So usually it's made, uh, made, made up by much denser materials, so, so that uh, you know, uh, any hadrons going through it will actually deposit energy in, in the HCAL part. And the muon, well, you, you, know the, you, know, you know the meaning of this, so, so muon is on the outside, so muon can, you know, um, usually it's much bigger, and, uh, and the, because the muon band with a much larger curvature, but you know, it, it tried to measure muon, detect the muon, and the, detect the muon, and the measure, me measure, measure the momentum of muon, basically. Okay, that, that's what this does. Yeah, so now let's think about uh, what does these, these, these things do uh, going through this, okay? So, uh, let's say, okay, so for example, I, I send in a photon, okay? Photon that does nothing here, very roughly, okay? So, so photon, roughly speaking, does nothing here, but it will deposit all its energy here, okay? Because the photon can, you know, create a pair and these can shower and so on and so forth, okay? It will, it will deposit all its energy here. Okay, it will deposit a lot of energy here. Um, and that's it. That's what the photon does. Okay, of course, in reality, that's not what the photon does. Okay, sometimes it will do something here, sometimes it will do something here, but generically, it's a, this is the you know, very cartoon version. So E plus E minus going here is that it's going to leave a track in the tracking place and it's going to deposit all its energy here, okay? And uh, muon, okay, it will go through here, leave a track, and it's actually not going to deposit much energy here because the, the, the rate of radiation is go, goes down by a high power of its mass, so it's actually not going to deposit lots of energy here, not going to deposit lots of energy here, and then you actually see it here in the muon chamber, okay? It's much bigger, so it has a magnetic field, it will bend this thing, okay? It, it will leave a track here, too, but it will bend, the track will bend around here, and you, 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 you start to see it. And uh, you can have hadrons, right? You can pi plus minus, p or something, a bunch of hadrons in a jet, and so on. So what this does do is it does leave a track here, okay? But it also, quite heavy, don't really deposit all the, their energy here, but it will, it will really just, uh, it, will, it will really, you know, shower a lot and so on, deposit all its energy in the H cal. That's why this is called H cal. And uh, if you have a neutral hadron, for example, if uh, you have a neutron, okay? What well, does, it does nothing here, does nothing here. And, uh, but it will deposit all its energy here. Okay, so this is, again, this is a, you know, uh, totally <laughs> way sim sim to simplify the picture of what the, what the particle ID, how the particle ID works, okay? But this is just a, you know, a cartoon that um, tells us that it's possible to identify these particles, okay? Of course, for B quark, B quark is a hadron. You identify first as some kind of a hadron, okay? It, you don't see B quark, you see it's a decay product but decay product is mostly hydron, sometimes there's a soft muon, but uh, you, you, yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, you, de you detect it, but you detect a B quark because you can actually use tracker to reconstruct uh, where it decays. B quark lives a finite uh, lifetime, so it's not, uh, you, you, you can use this tracker to, to see the decay product's track and reconstruct its vertex, so that, that's how you see the B quark to a less extent of, of, of charm quark, okay? Uh, yeah, okay? Then you, you know, you, you usually you add up all the visible energies in the detector and uh, what, the imbalance is called the missing energy, okay? Okay, so let's see what else I wanted to do. Um, okay, now,
Uh, okay, let, let, let me do, uh, let, let's do it like this. So, so these are uh, objects, okay? So let, let's think about uh, how, to, how the discoveries will be made, okay? How, how do we see new physics particles? Okay, let's just uh, think about it at a, at a very, uh, very roughly. The first thing you can do is, so, so, so let's see. I'm drawing an abstract plot without the, you know, but the standard model usually always looks like this. Okay, on any plot. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, it's not any plot, but it usually looks like this. But it's a featureless. I think that the, the key thing is standard model usually don't have that much feature, especially you're talking about the higher energies. It, all the particles are massless, uh, approximately, so there's not much feature in it. Not not at this level. I'm not going to label axes. Okay, so, uh, but but you can see that. Anyway, so, so the, fir <laughs> that the first thing you wanted to look for is, is whether uh, new physics has a feature in it, okay? New physics usually have some kind of feature, okay? Because we're, we're talking about a heavy particle, okay? So, so it, it has a different energy scale. So you, you have to produce them with, with, with you know. It, standard model has no feature because their particles are basically massless. So, so you're basically following the PDF. You, the, the more energetic they are, and the, they, they, yeah. Uh, but uh, new physics sometimes has features, okay, because you, you, you're producing a particle, right? So, so single out of mass scale. So yeah, new physics can have some feature. Okay, so it's a kinematical feature. Okay, so that will be that will be probably the most uh, uh, obvious way to, to see a new physics particle uh, to look for a kinematical feature. Another way of doing it is that uh, there is a standard model like this. Okay, and uh, but new physics it does have a feature, but the feature is not very obvious. Okay, we, we can we can we can go through the examples, but feature there's not a very sharp feature. Feature is very very broad. Okay, it it, it does you know prefer some high energy scale, but uh, so let's say new physics is something like this. Okay, new physics something like this, and this is much more challenging. Of doing it, okay, and uh, well, mostly because uh, the you know the standard model has a has an error bar, you know, and uh, and they ha if you have the same shape, and uh, you know, it's very tempting to say that maybe I'm not modeling the background correctly, okay, maybe maybe I'm not modeling the background correctly, and I'm just going to multiply it. By a factor, and I get rid of it. Or, or, or another way of saying it, I just in, in, inflate my error bar a little bit. I, I, you know, even though my Monte Carlo generator tell me that the error bar is, uh, you know, does, uh, my my simulation tells me that the error bar is one percent, but I, I claim that the Anderson estimated by a factor of two is two percent. Okay, now now you just get rid of it. Okay, so yeah, this is a quicker way to publish uh, experimental limit is to inflate the, well, the official line is being conservative on systematic errors. Okay, so <laughs> you can inflate it. <laughs> anyway, okay, so another, but the one way of doing, you know, one way you can still do something is to focus somewhere here, okay? Around the, this region where S over B is order one. Signal over background is order one. There it's become harder to justify, 
you know, I have to multiply by my, my background by, by factor of two, factor of three to, 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 you know, if I see something, okay? So, so the, this, this is usually at the edge of your, your kinematical limit. A standard model background is really dying, but, the, you know, your, your, you, you focus on the re region where, where standard model background is very small, basically. And uh, there is not much, uh, and the signal is, you, you, you care about is comparable to it, okay? So that, that, that's how you try to look for it. Okay. So let me briefly talk about uh, you know, a couple of kinematical features that's useful, but there are, there are, there are lots of them. And uh, let, let me just, just briefly talk about the two of them. Okay, because I think it's, uh, it's actually pretty familiar. The first kinematical feature One is a, is, a, is a resonance, okay? By resonance, I don't mean that uh, just uh, produce a particle as a resonance. You always produce particle almost always as a resonance, but uh, their decay, you can see all their decay product, and uh, you can reconstruct the resonance, okay? So it's, uh, it's something like a PT, and uh, you actually reconstruct this resonance, okay? So you, you, the, you see both one and two. So both of these are visible. Okay. And uh, then in this case, it's obvious what to do. Okay. You, 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 you take these two and you add them that and square it. It should give you mx square within the width. Okay. So. Yeah, so, so it will look like this. And there is, a, there is some, this is some kind of a width. And uh, this is a mx. Okay? And uh, this is the m12, which is a so called invariant mass. Okay? This is a p1 plus p2 square, square root. Okay? So that's the most obvious one. And in standard model, obviously, the resonance you can do, reconstruct this way, you can do z goes to l plus l minus. Right? This is the most obvious signal. But you can also go to do, try to do top quark. OK, b and the w, right? when, the, when the w goes to, to jet. In this decay, you see everything and uh, you, you can try to do it. In fact, this is the way they, they try to measure top quark mass, okay. is to actually try to reconstruct the top resonance. Um, what else I wanted to say? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just say that much. And, uh, there. Now, what happened when, when, you, you, when you actually miss one of them? Okay, say, say, let, let's say one of them is neutrino, for example. So, Sorry. yeah. What does the width of the peak depend on? That depends on the, the width of the particle, uh, uh, ideally. And uh, experimentally, it actually you know, it depends on which one is big. There are two, two, two numbers. One is the, the, the internal width of the particle. B is the resolution that you, how well you can measure the momentum. If you cannot measure the momentum very well, then, then, if the, then the resolution is it's actually dominated just by the resolution. That's usually the case for, you know, for example, things decay to jet at RHC. You know. For example, it's impossible to measure, we, we, we can talk about more about this, but it's impossible to measure Higgs width at RHC. <laughs> Okay, it's just because the resolution is, uh, whatever final state you think about the resolution, even diphoton final state, the resolution is much bigger than Higgs width. Okay, so you, you what you see is just a, a peak smeared out by, by the resolution, no, not actually the. What is the resolution, by the way, half GeV? It depends, okay, we can talk about that too, but uh, usually for a 100 GeV object, you know, I would say for jets, it's a few percent. And uh, you know, and uh, uh, for lepton is is better, maybe one percent. So again, this is a very rough number. So we we can look it up, and uh, it, it's actually energy dependent. 
OK? Yeah, so you know, if a particle width is uh, less than a percent of the particle mass, which you know, is, is not crazy, you know, and uh, basically at the RHC, you're always almost dominated by, by the resolution. You never actually measure the, 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 in, the intrinsic width. OK. Now, what if you miss a particle? OK, if you miss a particle, let, let's say the, well, the standard example is W. OK? W goes electron and neutrino. You, you, you miss the one over the particle. Yeah. OK? And uh, you, you can see this. You can see this. OK? So let's say in this case, Let, 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 let's do two, two things, OK? First, let's, t let's think about the PT of the electron, OK? Let, let, let's, OK, let, let's first, let's just, uh, in, a, in a very simple scenario, OK? Because QQ bar goes to a W E mu, OK? And I suppose that's all that's happened, OK? So this W is literally moving along the Z direction. Okay. There's no there's no transverse momentum for the W. Is that okay? Because PP bar is QQ bar is along the Z direction, and these two, and it decays to these two. Now let's think about the the, the PT of of E. Okay, let's think about that. And uh, okay. And the PT of E square is a 1 over 4 S hat. OK, this is the center of mass energy, uh, uh, energy square, and this is the angle, a theta angle in the center of mass frame. OK, Any, anything with a hat is, is, the, is the part on center of mass frame. OK, now let's think about the, the distribution of this guy. Okay, suppose I make a distribution of this guy. Okay. What's usually but what, what usually I do with with you know at the well. But what I know is that the, this this distribution is is isotropical in the center of mass frame. So this is this is just some flat number. Okay? But this is not equal to that. There's a Jacobian between the, the, these two. Okay, you can work it out just from here. And uh, okay, and uh, and uh, okay, and uh, this is uh, the, the see the hat times. Minus well, there's some factors here. One over okay. So you can verify that's the case. Okay, so this tells you two things. Okay, so um, well, this mainly tells you one thing. So, so what is what is the PT distribution going to look like? Okay, so first of all, I'm producing this uh, W on shell. So this S hat is just uh, M W. Okay, so it's a it's. A, um, so, what is the PT distribution in terms of PT square? Okay, first of all, it ends. Uh, it ends like uh, you know, FW square over four. 
Okay, so PT is a, there's an endpoint here, okay, as a half of the W mass square. Okay, that's obvious. Just, that's just from a momentum conservation. Of, you know, the largest the PT can be is is half of the W mass because the, the the other half of energy has to go to the neutrino. Okay, and the, but this tells you something more. This not not only tells you that uh, there is endpoint, but it tells you that it's increased towards the endpoint, and it has a particular shape determined by this function. Okay. So what is that shape? Is a uh, yeah. That's a uh, you know. I'm not going to draw this very well. It looks something like this. Okay. Uh, well, you can plot this by Mathematica. Um, and uh, so this is a this is a this is a peak, but it's not a resonance peak. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not like a, a Gaussian peak like this, but it looks like this with this shape de determined by that Jacobian. Right there, this is called a Jacobian peak. Okay. So you can, and it's also pretty sharp. Okay, you can, you can actually see this uh, on top of a background. Okay, you can hope to see this. Okay, so this is a PT distribution, okay, with this case. I, I, let, me, let me tell you what uh, people usually do, okay. People usually do is uh, not, instead of P, PT distribution, you, you just, you, you work with something called the transverse mass. Yeah, because that, that's, that's, that's somewhat better, okay. That, that has an even more uh, invariant uh, uh, endpoint, okay, transverse mass. Okay, so let me define transverse mass. Okay. So first of all, the, the, the invariant mass. Let me I may need a slightly bigger board. Okay. Let me do it here. So transverse mass. Mt. And uh, so but first of all, invariant mass in this language is uh, well, that's m12 square, but uh, that is uh, e energy of electron plus energy of neutrino square minus uh, P T of electron plus P T P perpendicular P T of uh, well let me go P P T P T of neutrino square minus P E well, PZ of electron plus PZ of a neutrino square. Okay, that's invariant mass. I wrote it out uh, uh, with uh, just with a, uh, you know. On the other hand, we can also de define something called the electron transverse energy of electron. Okay, not the electron mass energy actually measured, but the transverse energy of electron. Which is basically just uh, the absolute value of uh, PE transverse energy, transverse momentum, and uh, transverse uh, transverse momentum energy of neutrino, which is just uh, neutrino PT. Okay, I'll, I'll just define that. And this is really, in, in practical, that definition is just really end up being the missing energy, okay? And uh, now, if we define that way, you see that the mt square, well, 
So first of all, first of all, okay. Um, M E T, oh, sorry, E E T is less than the actual energy of the electron, right? So E, uh, well, yeah, E missing energy. That's E neutrino T is less than actual energy of a neutrino. Okay, and. Uh, so, so let me let me define m t square equal to just use these transverse quantities e t plus e ah so I'm missing up uh, mass up uh, upper and the lower indices uh, square minus p t e plus p New square. Okay, this is the, how the transverse mass is defined, and uh, so I'm ignoring this term. I'm lowering the value of these two guys, and this means that uh, it's manifested less than the invariant mass. Okay, or this guy has an endpoint. Okay, M T has an endpoint. At uh, m one two, okay, and this fact does not depend on whether there is additional radiation in the event or not. Okay, yeah. Stupid question: How do we definitely know that m t squared is smaller than? Well, I ignore this guy, and I make this term smaller. Huh? Sorry. Yeah. But if you remove something, it's a minus. Right? Ah, sorry. Hold on. Did I do this wrong? Uh, ah. Uh, now I'm a little confused. Sorry. Shouldn't be. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so perhaps we need to be more careful about this. Um, the first huh? The first is Sorry? Yeah, the first term is different. So, so I think that it must be. So we, we can we can probably can prove this. Uh, I think it's, it's not as simple as I said. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, I mean you 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 this this is really e is really this square plus this square right. square root. Right. So so you I, I think you can prove that, that this is still true. Okay, uh, but uh, let, I, 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 let let me not do it on the board. But I I, I can I can do it later. Once uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very dangerous, so do it on the board. Uh, but there is an endpoint of this guy, and, uh, and this does not depend on whether there are additional radiation in the event or not. OK? Um, so, so, so this, is, this may, may, may makes this slightly better than the PT variable we're using, OK? Because, uh, you know, that, that, yeah. What do you mean by if there are additional radiation? Yeah, so there, there can be additional radiation. So, so for the PT guy, uh, I was doing that derivation, assuming that uh, the, this guy moves along z direction. Okay, that the whole direction, whole, whole derivation depends on that, and this one doesn't. 
Okay, you you can have a Z, you can have a W recoil against the jet, so the Z, the W has some transverse motion. Okay, in that case, and this is still true. Okay, because nothing nothing I do here, provided I prove that, uh, depend on the fact that, that there is a, a, a dip, you know, yeah. Um, and uh, right, so. That and but on the other hand, we see that uh, if if W is still approximately moving along uh, Z, let's say just mostly is still going that way, and uh, then M T is approximately twice of the PT, basically, of, of electron. OK? I, I, you can show that. Uh, it's, it's a trivial to show that. OK. Uh -huh. OK. Now, now what do I do? Um, so you see that, uh, therefore, it's pretty easy to guess what the, what the distribution look like, okay, of the MT distribution. Okay, so first of all, it has an endpoint at the MW, okay, and uh, second of all, since mostly it, the, the W produced are still moving along, mostly along the Z direction, it, 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 the pay, you pay a price by radi adding additional radiation, and uh, you actually still almost have a Jacobian peak. It's just, uh, it's similar to that PT distribution, okay? You still have a Jacobian peak. Yeah, and uh, on the other hand, so, so there are a few things. So the endpoint is there, and, uh, but in reality, the endpoint is smeared by, by two things, okay? By W width, okay? Because W is not a, it's, it's not really fixed, fixed mass. There's, there, there's a width and the, and the resolution, okay? So the endpoints are smeared by these two things. And the, the shape here, <laughs> Shape here does depend on does depend on additional radiation. Okay, in the event. Okay, so so the endpoint. So so you know. Um, I think the first W is dis discovered by by looking for electron PT and. Uh, uh, but now, I mean, this becomes a very precision business. Measuring W mass, you, you know, you have to really fit the whole shape of this, this distribution by compare with the next leading order calculations and so on. So that, that, that is actually becomes a very precise uh, enterprise these days. Okay. Uh, so maybe I have uh, 20 minutes or something, is that? Okay. All right, so these are the kinematical features. So, so the, the, uh, the resonance search of transverse mass, and you can, the, 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 these are also used uh, in, uh, in, in new physics searches, because new physics can also have something like a W. Let's say there's a W prime. Okay, the W prime search is a bit literally like a W, because it also decay to electron and neutrino. And you can look for Z prime searches, okay? And <laughs> they, they decay to dileptons and also other things, okay? Um, what I wanted to do next is, uh, sorry, it's one example, a couple examples in this category, okay? The, the new physics has no features, but we literally have to, you know, go to the kinematical limit. Uh, it's close to the kinematical limit by just, you know, <coughs> by basically you just, so there you basically just count the event. You, you see an access on top of a, on top of a projected background. Um, Okay, so, 
So one typical example of that is, is a SUSY. Is a supersymmetry. OK. You know about supersymmetry? Maybe. <laughs> uh, OK. So, but let, 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 let you know, Susie has uh, lots of things, but let, let's consider, let's just consider some simple, simple scenarios, OK? Suppose I'm in a scenario where, where all the scalars are very heavy and only the, only the E nodes are there uh, at the low energy, OK? So I, I basically wanted to consider gluinos and, uh, you know, maybe charginos and so on, OK? Trying to see what are the reach for those guys. So what's that scenario called? <laughs> Split Susie, yes. I, uh, so it's just uh, for, for me, I mean, instead of motivation of Super Susie, this is just to uh, simplify my life, OK? Just, uh, you know, you consider. We wanted to just do, do a few examples, OK? Um, so let's say Gluino. OK, production. Let me even consider an even simpler case, OK? So just say this will just go down. This is jet, 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 jet. Uh, chi zero, chi zero. Just go down to LSP immediately. Okay, that's one particular scenario. Okay, it depends on secretly what the, what is the hierarchy of the 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 the, the squark you integrate out and so on. Okay. okay, so this is a very standard search. Okay, at LHC, this is called the jets plus missing energy. Okay, this is a, this multi jet plus mat. Okay. Um, now, now, what is the, let's see, the, the reach, I can tell you current reach is about uh, Gluino is about 2 TeV. OK? And roughly speaking. Uh, so how do we understand that? How do we, you know, how do you even think it's possible to, to set a limit around 2 TeV? OK? So first, you notice that the signal, the production, production uh, for, for Gluino pair production around, the, around 2 TeV around the M gluino equals 2 TeV is about uh, 1 femtowatt. OK? All right. So there can be a lot of background, standard model background for this, give you jets plus missing energy, OK? So, so this is a, this is basically looking for three or four jets plus missing energy. Okay, this is a, you know you you may not be able to see all these jets. Maybe you see some of them become one jet and so. On. Um, so let's see. Um, so there are several background. The first, the most uh, straightforward background is probably just. Uh, let me, let me do it on this board, OK? Is just the jets plus Z, where Z goes to neutrino, OK? So this is a, well, this gives you jets plus missing energy, OK? So what's the rate? What's the rate? of this, OK? Well, we can, we can obviously do a simulation, figure out what the rate of this, and uh, try to compare with experimental cuts. But let, let, let's try to try do some guesses, OK? So there are, many, there are several ways of doing it. But let's start from QCD DiJet. OK? So that rate is uh, 
100 nanobar over there. OK? Um, this is a 100 nanobar at energy roughly 500 GeV. OK? So the, um, now I will go down with the PDF. This is from 500 GeV to the relevant energy of uh, producing the producing the, the uh, producing the, the, these gluinos, okay, or to also or to the relevant energy of those jets, okay, and uh, it's about four TeV, okay. You, you, you basically three scale it to three three to uh, three to four TeV, okay. That, that's what the what the you know some of these the cross section needs to do, okay. And this give you, if you look at it, give you, give us a factor of, uh, give us 10 to the minus 3, okay? It's a, it's a you, you, you go down uh, by that much. Now I have to add a z, okay? And uh, pay a 20% branching ratio to, to, uh, to neutrino, but at this level, and I think uh, that's not a big price, okay? There's a 20% branching ratio from, uh, from Z to neutrino, so add a Z. OK, but what this does is basically I'm adding a particle. I'm adding a particle, so I'm, 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 I should pay a price about 10 to the minus 2 or 10 to the minus 3. OK, so this is a 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 3. OK, that's basically. And uh, well, and I have more than two jets in the, uh, in the uh, in the in the signal, right? If it's three or four, so I, I will add, uh, I will add, uh, you know, one more jet. Okay, one. At least I will add one more jet. Okay, and that's another ten to the minus two. To uh, to ten to the minus three. Okay. You see that uh, this is uh, you know anywhere between. Um, Right, so seven or nine order magnitude, okay? And uh, yeah, let's call it eight order magnitude, then it's a femtol bar, <laughs> okay? This takes this background roughly down to a femtol bar level, okay? That, that's what I said, you know, you set a limit where it's signal almost the same as the background, okay? In this kind of, a st because there's not much feature with, 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 this, de with this decay. Okay, there are four jets. You know, you can you can you can make uh, kinematical variables with those four jets, but it's not going to show you some very obvious feature. There's not a very obvious kinematical feature. Okay, and also you you well, you can also have a have a background with jets plus W goes to lepton neutrino. Okay, that you can also have. And uh, you can have jets, and you say, wait a minute, don't, don't, don't I have a lepton? <laughs> okay. So first of all, a lot of time, the, well, at least the one third of the time, the lepton is a tau. And the tau is actually a jet, because tau decays to pi. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a special jet, but uh, you know, it's not too different from a jet. And you can miss leptons. Okay, you can, you can miss a lepton in detector. So, but the W cross-section is larger than Z. Okay, adding a W is somewhat larger than adding a Z, but you, you pay the price of having to having to have to miss a lepton. Okay, so so these two backgrounds are similar. Okay, I'm not going to do it again. They are they are similar. And there is yet another background, which is a TT bar. Okay, TT bar is a good background because it has lots of jets. To begin with, okay, it doesn't have to. I don't have to radiate an ad additional jet, okay. So, so suppose I have a if I'm, if I have a TT bar background, and this goes to a B and a L neutrino, and uh, but uh, there's another uh, there's another one that but goes to two jets, and uh, this is a B. So I already have a two B and a two jet and a, and a lepton neutrino, okay. All I need to do is just make make sure I miss this lepton. Uh, you know, it's not a huge price to pay. Okay, so TT bar is usually a, a, also a fairly strong background with all these uh, all, all these studies. 
Okay, so we can do some estimate. The TT bars start out at, uh, at a nanobar ish. Okay, but uh, again, I need, to, I need to go to PDF, goes to TT bar center of mass energy around, uh, around the 3 to 4 TeV, because this is, my, this is the relevant energy. And, uh, and that gives you, you, you can look at, uh, the, again, the gluino, gluon PDF, and uh, that gives you a, a factor of ne negative 5 or 10, negative 6. Okay, gluon PDF actually drops faster, uh, going to higher energy. So this is uh, that, and uh, and you know you may be you know hiding hiding the lepton hiding the lepton you may you may you may pay a factor of ten okay so you know that's. and again this will take this uh, background down to femto one ish. Okay, so so basically, what I'm doing here is just a, you know, this is this is probably what the actual search being done 30 years ago, where they don't have really good computers. So you just have to really estimate like this. But uh, you know, uh, but you know, you, you see that the, the the two TeV number makes sense. Okay, if you if you so this, this doesn't mean that if you say your limit is 2.2 TeV, I, I still believe you. Okay, so it's, uh, you know because there are some errors in this and. Uh, but if you say your, your, your limit is 3 TeV, I will become suspicious. If your, your limit uh, uh, is, uh, is 1 TeV, I will say you, you probably didn't do things right. Okay, you're, 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 you're missing something. Okay. What else I wanted to do? Uh, ah, we can do one more thing, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, so now, so the, oh, let me try to do it on another board. One of the maybe slightly more favored scenario is to not to have this gluino decay to, to, to just jets, okay? It decays to TT bar. Okay. And uh, so, but for, for four tops, you have, you, can, you have a many, many interesting final state, okay? And uh, well, they, they can, first of all, they can all decay to jets, okay? They, they just give you a lot of jets, okay? But you probably don't really see that many jets because uh, you know, the, the detector, you, you probably won't be able to fit so many jets in the detector. It would be un, in, uh, unavoidable that some jet will lie on top of each other. You call them one of the one jets, okay? And, uh, but in general, you do have a lot of jets and also missing energy. So the so general jets plus mat, mat is still uh, is a, is a, is there and uh, and uh, perhaps uh, you can have B jets, okay? You can have B tags, okay? Because you have uh, one, two, three, four, four Bs to begin with, okay? You think you may have a reasonable chance of tagging two or three Bs, okay? You don't you don't pay too much, so B tagging efficiency is usually uh, 60, 70 percent, okay? And it turns out that you can still do this with mass plus jet channel, and that the limit is still two TeV, okay? The current limit is still two TeV. Okay, so, and uh, you can go through a, a similar argument that we, we just did, and the background, the, the main background here is still TT bar. Okay, TT bar, you can just, uh, you know, add a, add a B jet, for example, add a one or two Bs. Yeah, add a one or two Bs, okay? And that, that, that doesn't really take that much uh, price. Okay, to, to add one or two to Bs. Okay, uh, but uh, there is a second channel you think it might be useful because you have four Ws. Okay, there are, there are four tops, it decays to four Ws. And uh, what W give you is a possibility of having leptons. Okay, <laughs> leptons are usually very useful. Okay, uh, in particular, these Ws can have the same sign. 
Okay? These two Ws can have some, some kind of a same sign. And, uh, and they, give you, they can give you uh, um, <coughs> yeah. So, 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 so they can give you something called the same sign. Let me, let me write it out. Same sign di lepton. Okay. And uh, SSDL. Okay. And that usually is considered to be a particularly clean channel because W plus W minus is not a background. Okay, W plus W minus uh, plus jets, these are not background, okay? You have to produce uh, as two uh, same sign Ws, or you can have a, you know, yeah. And, uh, well, but it, it does, you, you, do, you do pay a branching ratio to go to same sign Ws. So, so the branching ratio, you pay, well, I didn't do this very carefully, but it's, it's, I think it's roughly a factor of one tenth. Okay, in 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 all the W leptonic decays. Okay, you have to pay the leptonic branching ratio, and you have to pay roughly one tenth. Uh, in all the leptonic decays, there is a there is a probably one tenth of them are are same sign that leptons. Okay. Okay. So combining these two. And the TT bar is still an important background, okay? TT bar is still an important background, okay? You can, you, can, you, can, you can do TT bar plus W or plus Z or just have something else, fake a lepton, that uh, actually give you a same sign that lepton, okay? Uh, so, well, we can do this more, more, more carefully, but, uh, 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 well, that probably requires a more detailed simulation and so on. The, the limit, Limit in the same sign that lepton channel is about 1.6 TeV. It's actually weaker than the, than the, than the multi-jet plus uh, missing energy channel. Okay, and mostly because there's a, you you pay a you pay pay some price here uh, on having a lower rate. Okay. Um, on the other hand, I think uh, this is, this is, I wanted to mention this because this highlights another point, okay? Um, this same sign that lepton, the background are relatively easy to, ma to, to, to model because the standard model background are coming from these very well-defined processes, okay? Um, uh, and uh, much cleaner to simulate and, uh, and to, 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 to estimate, okay? Um, so, so this limit is very robust. Okay, it's very hard to evade this limit. On the other hand, the, the multi-jet, ah, yeah. so, so this, this usual multi-jet limit, 2 TeV, this does depend uh, quite a bit on, on, your, on your, your, your confidence of understanding the, the, the multi-jet uh, background, okay, which is difficult. Okay, so, so this limit, I would think it's softer than, than, than this limit, okay? Um, in, uh, in other words, you know, it's, it's probably fairly uh, easy to come up with reasons to inflate error bars here to set the limit. It's pretty difficult to come up with reasons to inflate error bars over there. Okay. Yeah, I should stop at 12.45, right? So I think that's 12.45. Yeah, okay. I'll stop now.